Good morning, everyone. Uh, my name is Joseph Shekla. I am coordinator of Habitat International Coalition's Housing and Land Rights Network, speaking to you from Cairo. Unfortunately, I cannot uh, be with you in person today, but I'm glad to have such excellent colleagues on this panel to share with you the current events and developments in the long struggle for the human right to adequate housing and land in South Africa. And this is an auspicious moment to do so, only a few weeks before the Republic of South Africa undergoes its fourth universal periodic review. As sponsor of this event today, Habitat International Coalition and its social base of some 350 member organizations in over 80 countries extend their deeply felt solidarity with those on the front line of struggle to make good on the promises of the post-apartheid era in South Africa while realizing also that the apartheid model still remains institutionalized also in some other countries such as Israel and Myanmar. Founded in 1976 with the first conference of the UN on housing and human settlements, Habitat One, Habitat International Coalition has since built a body of collective work including international standard setting, advocacy, uh, to advance the related human rights norms to be practiced on the ground. For example, uh, Hick's early engagement with the UN human rights system prioritized the elaboration of a formal definition of the human right to adequate housing, promised in so few well-chosen words in the Covenant on Economic, Social, and Cultural Rights, Article 11. Co cooperation with the Committee on Economic, Social, and Cultural Rights led in 1991 to that legal definition in the committee's general comment number four, the first such general comment dedicated to a particular human right under the covenant. That author authoritative instrument uh, recognized that notwithstanding the type of tenure, all persons should possess a degree of security of tenure that guarantees legal protection against forced eviction, harassment, and other threats. Consequently, the committee called for states' parties to take immediate measures aimed at conferring legal security of tenure upon those persons and households currently lacking such protection in genuine consultation with affected persons and groups. At Habitat II in 1996, the Istanbul Declaration and Program of Action committed all states to the progressive realization of the human right to adequate housing, repeating that promise 61 times in a single policy instrument. A year later, the Committee on Economic, Social, and Cultural Rights adopted General Comment Number 7, recognizing the prohibition against the practice of forced eviction by states and third parties. It enshrined legal criteria for lawful eviction that have withstood the test of the ensuing 27 years. Moreover, the Commission on Human Rights also affirmed in 1993 and again reaffirmed in 2004 that forced eviction constitutes a gross violation of human rights, in particular the human right to adequate housing. By 2006, the General Assembly also adopted the reparations framework for the victims of such gross violations of human rights. By now, this council also has received this consistent advice from four successive special rapporteurs on adequate housing throughout the past two decades. Moreover, within the UN development system, the new urban agenda of 2016 has provided specificity to a bundle of SDGs guiding implement implementation of not only those temporary and voluntary commitments in the 2030 agenda, but also the prior, permanent, and binding obligations of states to respect, protect, and fulfill human rights. The new urban agenda policy instrument also commits states to prevent forced eviction, but also repeats their commitment to realize the social function of land and commits them to support the social production of housing and habitat, which involves the processes that generate 
habitable spaces, urban components, and homes carried out under the control of self-producers and other social agents who operate without seeking profit outside the formal market. In the UPR of South Africa, we look for examples of such practice to make good on these commitments and implement the state's obligations arising from the human right to adequate housing. These norms take on existential meaning and importance to Habitat International Coalition, which has accompanied all this theoretical standard setting and also today still seeks its implementation. However, by the current example of South Africa, which you are about to hear, we regret the continuing gross violations of human rights and mourn the assassination of four South African housing and land rights defenders this year alone. However, we also organize in solidarity with their communities in the pursuit of just reparations amid the progressive realization of the human right to adequate housing for all. Today, we may conclude that we still have a long, long way to go.